Brought to you by wikivd.com Queen Band Queen are a British rock band that formed in London in 1970. Their classic lineup was Freddie Mercury, Brian May, Roger Taylor and John Deacon. Queen's earliest works were influenced by progressive rock, hard rock and heavy metal. But the band gradually ventured into more conventional and radio-friendly works by incorporating further styles such as arena rock and pop rock into their music. Before forming Queen, Brian May and Roger Taylor had played together in Smile. Mercury then known by his birth name Farrokh Freddy Balsara was a fan of Smile and encouraged them to experiment with more elaborate stage and recording techniques. Mercury joined in 1970 suggested the name Queen and adopted his familiar stage name. Deacon was recruited before the band recorded their eponymous debut album in 1973. Queen first charted in the UK with their second album Queen 2 in 1974, but it was the release of Sheer Heart Attack later that year and A Night at the Opera in 1975 which brought them international success. The latter featured Bohemian Rhapsody which stayed at number one in the UK for nine weeks and was influential in helping to popularize the music video. The band's 1977 album News of the World contained We Will Rock You and We're the Champions, which have become anthems at sporting events. By the early 1980s, Queen were one of the biggest stadium rock bands in the world. Another One Bites the Dust became their best-selling single. While the 1981 compilation album Greatest Hits is the best-selling album in the UK and is certified eight times platinum in the US, their performance at the 1985 Live Aid concert has been ranked among the greatest in rock history by various music publications. In 1991 Mercury died of bronchopneumonia, a complication of AIDS and Deacon retired in 1997. May and Taylor have performed under the Queen name with Paul Rogers and Adam Lambert as vocalists on several tours since. Estimates of their record sales range from 150 million to 300 million records making them one of the world's best-selling music artists. Queen received the Outstanding Contribution to British Music Award from the British Phonographic Industry in 1990. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2001. 1968-1974 Early Days In 1968 guitarist Brian May, a student at London's Imperial College, and bassist Tim Staffel decided to form a band. May placed an advertisement on a college notice board for a Mitch Mitchell, Ginger Baker type drummer. Roger Taylor, a young dental student, auditioned and got the job. The group called themselves Smile. While attending Ealing Art College, Tim Staffel became friends with Farrokh Balsara, a fellow student who had assumed the English name of Freddie. Balsara felt that he and the band had the same tastes and soon became a keen fan of Smile. In 1970, after Staffel left to join the band Humpy Bong, the remaining Smile members, encouraged by Balsara, changed their name to Queen and performed their first gig on 18 July. The band had a number of bass players during this period who did not fit with the band's chemistry. It was not until February 1971 that they settled on John Deacon and began to rehearse. For their first album, they recorded four of their own songs Lie Keep Yourself Alive, The Night Comes Down and Jesus for a demo tape. No record companies were interested. It was also around this time Freddie changed his surname to Mercury inspired by the line Mother Mercury, look what they've done to me in the song My Fairy King. On the 2nd of July 1971, Queen played their first show in the classic lineup of Mercury, May Taylor and Deacon at a Surrey College outside London. Having attended art college, Mercury also designed Queen's logo. 
called The Queen Crest shortly before the release of the band's first album. The logo combines the zodiac signs of all four members, two lions for Leo, a crab for Cancer, and two fairies for Virgo. The lions embrace a stylized letter Q, the crab rests atop the letter, with flames rising directly above it and the fairies are each sheltering below a lion. There is also a crown inside the queue and the whole logo is overshadowed by an enormous phoenix. The whole symbol bears a passing resemblance to the royal coat of arms of the United Kingdom, particularly with the lion supporters. The original logo, as found on the reverse side of the cover of the band's first album was a simple line drawing. Later sleeves bore more intricate colored versions of the logo. In 1972, Queen entered discussions with Trident Studios after being spotted at De La Lane Studios by John Anthony. After these discussions, Norman Sheffield offered the band a management deal under Neptune Productions a subsidiary of Trident to manage the band and enable them to use the facilities at Trident to record new material whilst the management searched for a record label to sign Queen. This suited both parties as Trident were expanding into management and under the deal. Queen were able to make use of the high-tech recording facilities used by other musicians such as the Beatles and Elton John to produce new material. In 1973, Queen signed to a deal with Trident Emmy. By July of that year, they released their eponymous debut album An Effort Influenced by Heavy Metal and Progressive Rock. The album was received well by critics. Gordon Fletcher of Rolling Stone called it superb and Chicago's Daily Herald called it an above average debut. However it drew little mainstream attention and the lead single, Keep Yourself Alive sold poorly. Retrospectively it is cited as the highlight of the album. And in 2008 Rolling Stone ranked it 31st in the 100 greatest guitar songs of all time, describing it as an entire album's worth of riffs crammed into a single song. The album was certified gold in the UK and the US. The group's second LP, Queen 2, was released in 1974, and features rock photographer Mick Rock's iconic image of the band on the cover. This image would be used as the basis for the 1975 Bohemian Rhapsody music video production. The album reached number 5 on the British album chart and became the first Queen album to chart in the UK. The Freddie Mercury written lead single Seven Seas of RHYE reached number 10 in the UK giving the band their first hit. The album is the first real testament to the band's distinctive layered sound and features long complex instrumental passages, fantasy-themed lyrics and musical virtuosity. Aside from its only single, the album also included the song The March of the Black Queen, a six-minute epic which lacks a chorus. The Daily Vault described the number as menacing. Critical reaction was mixed, the Winnipeg Free Press while praising the band's debut album, described Queen 2 as an overproduced monstrosity. All Music has described the album as a favorite among the band's hardcore fans, and it is the first of three Queen albums to feature in the book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. 1974-1976, Sheer Heart Attack 2 A Night at the Opera In May 1974, a month into the band's first U.S. tour opening for Mott the Hoople, Brian May collapsed and was diagnosed with hepatitis forcing the cancellation of their remaining dates. While recuperating May was initially absent when the band started work on their third album, but he returned midway through the recording process. Released in 1974, Sheer Heart Attack reached number two in the United Kingdom sold well throughout Europe, and went gold in the United States. It gave the band their first real experience of international success, and was a hit on both sides of the Atlantic.
The album experimented with a variety of musical genres including British music hall heavy metal ballads ragtime and Caribbean. At this point Queen started to move away from the progressive tendencies of their first two releases into a more radio-friendly song oriented style. Sheer Heart Attack introduced new sound and melody patterns that would be refined on their next album A Night at the Opera. The single, Killer Queen from Sheer Heart Attack reached number two on the British charts and became their first US hit reaching number 12 on the Billboard Hot 100. It combines camp, vaudeville and British music hall with May's guitar virtuosity. The album's second single, Now I'm Here, a more traditional hard rock composition was a number 11 hit in Britain. While the high-speed rocker Stone Cold Crazy featuring May's up-tempo riffs is a precursor to speed metal. In recent years the album has received acclaim from music publications. In 2006, Classic Rock ranked it number 28 in the 100 Greatest British Rock Albums Ever and in 2007, Mojo ranked it number 88 in the 100 records that changed the world. It is also the second of three Queen albums to feature in the book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. In January 1975 the band left for a world tour with each member in Zandra Rhodes created costumes and accompanied with banks of lights and effects. They toured the U.S. as headliners and played in Canada. For the first time after that they played in seven cities of Japan from mid-April to the start of May. In September after an acrimonious split with Trident, the band negotiated themselves out of their Trident Studios contract and searched for new management. One of the options they considered was an offer from Led Zeppelin's manager, Peter Grant. Grant wanted them to sign with Led Zeppelin's own production company, Swan Song Records. The band found the contract unacceptable, and instead contacted Elton John's manager John Reed who accepted the position. In late 1975, Queen recorded and released A Night at the Opera taking its name from the popular Marx Brothers movie. At the time, it was the most expensive album ever produced. Like its predecessor, the album features diverse musical styles and experimentation with stereo sound. In the Prophets song, an eight-minute epic, the middle section is a canon, with simple phrases layered to create a full choral sound. The Mercury Pen ballad, Love of My Life, featured a harp and overdubbed vocal harmonies. The album was very successful in Britain and went triple platinum in the United States. The British public voted it the 13th greatest album of all time in a 2004 Channel 4 poll. It has also ranked highly in international polls, in a worldwide Guinness poll. It was voted the 19th greatest of all time. While an ABC poll saw the Australian public vote it's the 28th greatest of all time. A Night at the Opera has frequently appeared in greatest albums. Lists reflecting the opinions of critics, among other accolades. It was ranked number 16 in Q magazine's The 50 Best British Albums Ever in 2004, and number 11 in Rolling Stone's The 100 Greatest Albums of All Time. As featured in their Mexican edition in 2004, it was also placed at number 230 on Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest albums of all time in 2003. A Night at the Opera is the third and final Queen album, to be featured in the book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. The album also featured the hit single Bohemian Rhapsody which was number one in the UK for nine weeks. Mercury's close friend and advisor Capital London Radio DJ Kenny Everett played a pivotal role in giving the single exposure. It is the third best-selling single of all time in the UK surpassed only by Band Aids. Do They Know It's Christmas? and Elton John's Candle in the Wind 1997.
and is the best-selling commercial single in the UK. It also reached number 9 in the United States. It is the only single ever to sell a million copies on two separate occasions, and became the Christmas number 1 twice in the UK, the only single ever to do so. Bohemian Rhapsody has been voted numerous times the greatest song of all time. The band decided to make a video to help go with a single and hired Trillion, a subsidiary of the former management company Trident Studios using new technology. To create the video, the result is generally considered to have been the first true music video ever produced and popularized the medium. The album's first track Death on Two Legs is said to have been written by Mercury about Norman Sheffield and the former management at Trident who helped make the video so popular because the band was broke despite the success of the previous album. Although the bands, including the Beatles, had made short promotional films or videos of songs before, most of those were specifically made to be aired on specific television shows. On the impact of Bohemian Rhapsody Rolling Stone states, its influence cannot be overstated, practically inventing the music video seven years before MTV went on the air. The second single, from the album You're My Best Friend, the second song composed by John Deacon and his first single, peaked at number 16 in the United States and went on to become a worldwide top 10 hit. The band's A Night at the Opera tour began in November 1975 and covered Europe, the United States, Japan and Australia. 1976-1979, A Day at the Races to Live Killers by 1976 Queen were back in the studio recording A Day at the Races, which is often regarded as a sequel album to A Night at the Opera. It again borrowed the name of a Marx Brothers movie and its cover was similar to that of A Night at the Opera a variation on the same Queen crest, the most recognizable of the Marx Brothers. Groucho Marx invited Queen to visit him in his Los Angeles home in March 1977. There the band thanked him in person and performed 39 a cappella. Musically A Day at the races was by both fans and critics standards a strong effort, reaching number one in the UK and Japan and number five in the US. The major hit on the album was Somebody to Love, a gospel-inspired song in which Mercury May and Taylor multi-tracked their voices to create a 100-voice gospel choir. The song went to number 2 in the UK and number 13 in the US. The album also featured one of the band's heaviest songs, May's Tie Your Mother Down, which became a staple of their live shows. During 1976, Queen played one of their most famous gigs, a free concert in Hyde Park, London, a concert organized by the entrepreneur Richard Branson. It set an attendance record with 150,000 people confirmed in the audience. On 1 December 1976, Queen were the intended guests on London's Early Evening Today program but they pulled out at the last minute which saw the late replacement on the show Emmy label Mate the Sex Pistols give their infamous expletive-strewn interview with Bill Grundy. During the A-Day at the Racers Tour in 1977, Queen performed sold-out shows at Madison Square Garden, New York, in February and Earl's Court, London in June. The band's sixth studio album News of the World was released in 1977, which has gone four times platinum in the United States and twice in the UK. The album contained many songs Taylor made for live performance, including two of rock's most recognizable anthems We Will Rock You and The Rock Ballad, We Are The Champions both of which became enduring international sports anthems, and the latter reached number four in the US. Queen commenced the News of the World Tour in October 1977, and Robert Hilburn of the Los Angeles Times called this concert tour the band's 
most spectacularly staged and finely honed show. In 1978, the band released Jazz, which reached number two in the UK and number six on the Billboard 200 in the US. The album included the hit singles Fat Bottomed Girls and Bicycle Race on a double-sided record. Queen rented Wimbledon Stadium for a day to shoot the video, with 65 female models hired to stage a nude bicycle race. Reviews of the album in recent years have been more favorable. Another notable track from Jazz, Don't Stop Me Now provides another example of the band's exuberant vocal harmonies. In 1978, Queen toured the US and Canada and spent much of 1979 touring in Europe and Japan. They released their first live album Live Killers in 1979, it went platinum twice in the US. Queen also released the very successful single Crazy Little Thing Called Love, a rockabilly-inspired song done in the style of Elvis Presley. The song made the top 10 in many countries topped the Australian ARIA charts for seven consecutive weeks and was the band's first number one single in the United States, where it topped the Billboard Hot 100 for four weeks. Having written the song on guitar and played rhythm on the record, Mercury played rhythm guitar while performing the song live, which was the first time he ever played guitar in concert. In December 1979, Queen played the opening night at the concert for the people of Camp Air in London. Having accepted a request by the event's organizer Paul McCartney, 1980-1984, The Game to the Works. Queen began the 1980s career with The Game. It featured the singles, Crazy Little Thing Called Love and Another One Bites the Dust, both of which reached number one in the U.S. After attending a Queen concert in Los Angeles, Michael Jackson suggested to Mercury backstage that Another One Bites the Dust be released as a single and in October 1980 it spent three weeks at number one. The album topped the Billboard 200 for five weeks and sold over four million copies in the US. It was also the first appearance of a synthesizer on a Queen album. Here to four, their albums featured a distinctive no synthesizers sleeve note. The note is widely assumed to reflect an anti-synth pro-hard rock stance by the band but was later revealed by producer Roy Thomas Baker to be an attempt to clarify that those albums multi-layered solos were created with guitars not synths, as record company executives kept assuming at the time. In September 1980, Queen performed three sold-out shows at Madison Square Garden. In 1980, Queen also released the soundtrack they had recorded for Flash Gordon. At the 1981 American Music Awards in January another one bites the dust won the award for Favorite Pop Rock Single and Queen were nominated for Favorite Pop Rock Band Duo A Group. In February 1981 Queen traveled to South America as part of the game tour and became the first major rock band to play in Latin American stadiums. The tour included five shows in Argentina, one of which drew the largest single concert crowd in Argentine history, with an audience of 300,000 in Buenos Aires and two concerts at the Morumbi Stadium in Sao Paulo, Brazil where they played to an audience of more than 131,000 people in the first night and more then 120,000 people the following night. In October of the same year Queen performed for more than 150,000 fans on the 9th of October at Monterrey and 17 and 18 at Puebla, Mexico. On 24 and the 25th of November Queen played two sell-out nights at the Montreal Forum, Quebec, Canada. One of Mercury's most notable performances of the game's final track Save Me took place in Montreal, and the concert is recorded in the live album Queen Rock Montreal. Queen worked with David Bowie on the single Under Pressure, the first-time collaboration 
with another artist was spontaneous as Bowie happened to drop by the studio while Queen were recording. Upon its release the song was extremely successful, reaching number one in the UK and featuring at number 31 on VH1's 100 Greatest Songs of the 80s. In October that year Queen released their first compilation album titled Greatest Hits, which showcased the group's highlights from 1974 to 1981. It is the best-selling album in UK chart history and has spent 450 weeks in the UK album chart. The album is certified eight times platinum in the United States and has sold over 25 million copies worldwide. Taylor became the first member of the band to release his own solo album in 1981 titled Fun in Space. In 1982, the band released the album Hot Space a departure from their trademark 70s sound, this time being a mixture of rock, pop, rock, dance, funk and R. Most of the album was recorded in Munich during the most turbulent period in the band's history and Taylor and May lamented the new sound, with both being very critical of the influence Mercury's personal manager Paul Prenter had on the singer. May was also scathing of Prenter who was Mercury's manager from the early 1980s to 1984, for being dismissive of the importance of radio stations such as the US networks, and their vital connection between the artist and the community and for denying them access to Mercury. Q magazine would list Hot Space as one of the top 15 albums where great rock acts lost the plot. On 14 and 15 September 1982, the band performed the last two gigs in the US with Mercury on lead vocals. Those concerts were held at the Forum in Inglewood, California. The band stopped touring North America after their Hot Space tour as their success there had waned. Although they would perform on American television for the only time, during the eighth season premiere of Saturday Night Live on 25 September of the same year, it became the final public performance of the band in North America before the death of their frontman. Queen left Elektra Records, the label in the US, Canada, Japan, Australia and New Zealand, and signed on to Emmy Capital Records. After working steadily for over 10 years, Queen decided that they would not perform any live shows in 1983. During this time, they recorded a new album at the Record Plant Studios Los Angeles and Musicland Studios Munich and several members of the band explored side projects and solo work. Taylor released his second solo album Strange Frontier, May released the mini-album Starfleet Project collaborating with Eddie Van Halen. In February 1984, Queen released their 11th studio album The Works which included the successful singles Radio Gaga Hammer to Fall and I Want to Break Free. Despite these hit singles, the album failed to do well in the US while in the UK it went triple platinum and remained in the album's chart for two years. That year Queen began the Works tour, the first tour to feature keyboardist Spike Edney as an extra, live musician. The tour featured nine sold-out dates in October in Bofa that's one of South Africa, at the arena in Sun City. Upon returning to England they were the subject of outrage, having played in South Africa during the height of apartheid, and in violation of worldwide divestment efforts and a United Nations cultural boycott. The band responded to the critics by stating that they were playing music for fans in South Africa, and they also stressed that the concerts were played before integrated audiences. Queen donated to a school for the deaf and blind as a philanthropic gesture that were fined by the British Musicians Union and placed on the United Nations blacklisted artists. 1985-1988 Live Aid and Later Years
In January 1985, the band headlined two nights of the first Rock in Rio festival at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and played in front of over 300,000 people each night. The Boston Globe described it as a mesmerizing performance. A selection of highlights of both nights was released on VHS, with the title Queen, Live in Rio, and was later broadcast on MTV in the U.S. In April and May 1985, Queen completed the works tour with sold-out shows in Australia and Japan. At Live Aid held at Wembley on 13 July 1985 in front of the biggest ever TV audience of 1.9 billion. Queen performed some of their greatest hits, during which the sold-out stadium audience of 72,000 people clapped, sang and swayed in unison. The show's organizers Bob Geldof and Midge or other musicians such as Elton John Cliff Richard and Dave Grohl and music journalists writing for the BBC CNN Rolling Stone MTV. The Telegraph among others stated that Queen stole the show. An industry poll in 2005 ranked it the greatest rock performance of all time. Mercury's powerful sustained note during the a cappella section came to be known as the note heard around the world. When interviewed for Mojo magazine the band said the most amazing sight at Live Aid was to see the audience clapping to Radio Gaga. Brian May stated, I'd never seen anything like that in my life and it wasn't calculated either. We understood our audience and played to them but it was one of those weird accidents. Because of the video, I remember thinking, oh great they picked it up, and then I thought, this is not a queen audience. This is a general audience who've bought tickets before they even knew we were on the bill. And they all did it. How did they know? Nobody told them to do it. The band now revitalized by the response to Live Aid a shot in the arm Roger Taylor called it and the ensuing increase in record sales ended in 1985 by releasing the single One Vision, which was the third time after Stone Cold Crazy and Under Pressure that all four band members received a writing credit for the one song. Also, a limited edition box set containing all Queen albums to date was released under the title of The Complete Works. The package included previously unreleased material most notably Queen's non-album single of Christmas 1984 titled Thank God It's Christmas. In early 1986 Queen recorded the album A Kind of Magic, containing several reworkings of songs written for the fantasy action film Highlander. The album was very successful producing a string of hits including the title track, A Kind of Magic. Also charting from the album were Who Wants to Live Forever, Friends Will Be Friends and the de facto theme from Highlander Princes of the Universe. In summer of 1986 Queen went on a final tour with Freddie Mercury. A sold-out tour in support of A Kind of Magic once again they hired Spike Edney. The Magic Tour's highlight was at Wembley Stadium in London and resulted in the live double album. Queen at Wembley released on CD and as a live concert VHS DVD, which has gone five times platinum in the US and four times platinum in the UK. Queen could not book Wembley for a third night but they did play at Nebworth Park. The show sold out within two hours and over 120,000 fans packed the park for what was Queen's final live performance with Mercury. Queen began the tour at the Rassunder Stadium in Stockholm, Sweden and during the tour the band performed a concert at Slane Castle Island in front of an audience of 95,000, which broke the venue's attendance record. The band also played behind the Iron Curtain when they performed to a crowd of 80,000 at the NE Acute P Stadion in Budapest in what was one of the biggest rock concerts ever held in Eastern Europe. More than one million people saw Queen on the tour, 400,000 in the UK alone a record at the time.
After working on various solo projects during 1988, the band released The Miracle in 1989. The album continued the direction of A Kind of Magic using a pop-rock sound mixed with a few heavy numbers. It spawned the European hits I Want It All Breakthrough, The Invisible Man Scandal and The Miracle. The Miracle also began a change in direction of Queen's songwriting philosophy. Since the band's beginning nearly all songs had been written by and credited to a single member, with other members adding minimally. With The Miracle, the band's songwriting became more collaborative and they vowed to credit the final product only to Queen as a group. 1988-1992, Mercury, Illness Death in Tribute After fans noticed Mercury's increasingly gaunt appearance in 1988, the media reported that Mercury was seriously ill, with AIDS frequently being mentioned as a likely illness. Mercury flatly denied this, insisting he was merely exhausted and too busy to provide interviews. He was now 42 years old and had been heavily involved in music for nearly two decades. Mercury had in fact been diagnosed as being HIV positive during 1987, but did not make his illness public and denied that anything was wrong. In spite of Mercury's illness the band decided to continue making albums starting with The Miracle and continuing with Innuendo. Despite his deteriorating health the lead singer continued to contribute. For the last two albums made while Mercury was still alive, the band credited all songs to Queen rather than specific members of the group, freeing them of internal conflict and differences. In 1990 Queen ended their contract with Capitol and signed with Disney's Hollywood Records which has since remained the group's music catalog owner in the United States and Canada. In February that year Mercury made his final public appearance when he joined the rest of Queen to collect the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to British Music throughout 1990. Media reports persisted that Mercury was seriously ill but the singer continued to deny that these reports were true. Innuendo was released in early 1991, with an eponymous number one UK hit and other charting singles released later in the year, which included The Show Must Go On. This song released as a forerunner to Greatest Hits 2 in October 1991 featured archived footage of Queen's performances between 1981 and 1989 and along with the manner of its lyrics this continued to fuel the media reports that Mercury was dying although this was still officially denied. Mercury was increasingly ill and could barely walk when the band recorded the show Must Go On. In 1990, because of this May had concerns about whether he was physically capable of singing it. Recalling Mercury's successful performance May states, he went in and killed it. Completely lacerated that vocal. The rest of the band were ready to record when Mercury felt able to come into the studio for an hour or two at a time. May says of Mercury, he just kept saying, write me more, write me stuff, I want to just sing this and do it and, when I am gone you can finish it off, he had no fear really. The band's second Greatest Hits compilation Greatest Hits 2 followed in October 1991, which is the eighth best-selling album of all time in the UK, and has sold 16 million copies worldwide. On 23 November 1991, in a prepared statement made on his deathbed Mercury confirmed that he had AIDS. Within 24 hours of the statement he died of bronchial pneumonia, which was brought on as a complication of AIDS. His funeral service on 27 November in Kensal Green, West London was private and held in accordance with the Zoroastrian religious faith of his family. Bohemian Rhapsody was re-released as a single shortly after Mercury's death with These Are The Days Of Our Lives as the double-A side. The music video for 
These are the days of our lives contains Mercury's final scenes in front of the camera. This track had featured at the beginning of the year on the Innuendo album and the video. For it was recorded in May 1991. It had already been released as a single in the US in September that year. The single went to number one in the UK remaining there for five weeks the only recording to top the Christmas chart twice and the only one to be number one in four different years. Initial proceeds from the single approximately £1 million were donated to the Terence Higgins Trust and AIDS charity. Queen's popularity was stimulated in North America when Bohemian Rhapsody was featured in the 1992 comedy film Wayne's World. Its inclusion helped the song reach number two on the Billboard Hot 100 for five weeks in 1992, and won the band an MTV Award at the 1992 MTV Video Music Awards. The compilation album Classic Queen also reached number four on the Billboard 200, and is certified three times platinum in the U.S. Wayne's World footage was used to make a new music video for Bohemian Rhapsody with which the band and management were delighted. On 20 April 1992 the Freddie Mercury tribute concert was held at London's Wembley Stadium to a 72,000-strong crowd, performers including Def Leppard, Robert Plant, Guns N' Roses, Elton John, David Bowie, George Michael, Annie Lennox, Seal Extreme, and Metallica performed various Queen songs along. With the three remaining Queen members the concert is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the largest rock star benefit concert as it was televised to over 1.2 billion viewers worldwide and raised over £20 million for AIDS charities. 1995-2003, Made in Heaven to 46664 Concert Queen's last album featuring Mercury titled Made in Heaven was finally released in 1995, four years after his death, featuring tracks such as Too Much Love Will Kill You in Heaven. For everyone it was constructed from Mercury's final recordings in 1991 material left over from their previous studio albums and reworked material from May Taylor and Mercury's solo albums. The album also featured the song Mother Love the last vocal recording Mercury made, which he completed using a drum machine over which May Taylor and Deacon later added the instrumental track. After completing the penultimate verse, Mercury had told the band he wasn't feeling that great and stated I will finish it when I come back next time. However, he never made it back into the studio. So May later recorded the final verse of the song. Both stages of recording before and after Mercury's death were completed at the band's studio in Montreux, Switzerland. The album reached number one on the UK charts immediately following its release and has sold 20 million copies worldwide. On 25 November 1996, a statue of Mercury was unveiled in Montreux overlooking Lake Geneva almost five years to the day since his death. In 1997 Queen returned to the studio to record No One But You a song dedicated to Mercury and all those that die too soon. It was released as a bonus track on the Queen Rocks compilation album later that year. In January 1997 Queen performed the show Must Go On live with Elton John and the Bedgett Ballet in Paris on a night Mercury was remembered, and it marked the last performance and public appearance of John Deacon who chose to retire. The Paris concert was only the second time Queen had played live since Mercury's death, prompting Elton John to urge them to perform again. Brian May and Roger Taylor performed together at several awards ceremonies and charity concerts sharing vocals with various guest singers. During this time they were billed as Queen followed by the guest singer's name. In 1998, the duo appeared at Luciano Pavarotti's benefit concert with May performing 
Too Much Love Will Kill You with Pavarotti later playing Radio Gaga We Will Rock You and We Are The Champions with Zuccero. They again attended and performed at Pavarotti's Benefit Concert in Modena, Italy in May 2003. Several of the guest singers recorded new versions of Queen's hits under the Queen name, such as Robbie Williams providing vocals for We Are The Champions, for the soundtrack of A Knight's Tale. In 1999 a Greatest Hits 3 album was released. This featured among others Queen Wyclef Jean on a rap version of Another One Bites The Dust a live version of Somebody to Love by George Michael and a live version of The Show Must Go On, with Elton John were also featured in the album. By this point, Queen's vast amount of record sales made them the second best-selling artist in the UK of all time. Behind the Beatles, on 18 October 2002, Queen were awarded the 2207th star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for their work in the music industry which is located at 6358 Hollywood Boulevard. On the 29th of November 2003, May and Taylor performed at the 46,664 concert hosted by Nelson Mandela at Greenpoint Stadium, Cape Town to raise awareness of the spread of HIV, AIDS in South Africa. May and Taylor spent time at Mandela's home discussing how Africa's problems might be approached, and two years later the band was made ambassadors for the 46,664 cause. 2004-2009 Queen Paul Rogers At the end of 2004 May and Taylor announced that they would reunite and return to touring in 2005 with Paul Rogers. Brian May's website also stated that Rogers would be featured with Queen as Queen Paul Rogers not replacing Mercury, the retired John Deacon would not be participating. In November 2004, Queen were among the inaugural inductees into the UK Music Hall of Fame, and the award ceremony was the first event at which Rogers joined May and Taylor as vocalist. Between 2005 and 2006 Queen Paul Rogers embarked on a world tour, which was the first time Queen toured since the last tour with Freddie Mercury in 1986. The band's drummer Roger Taylor commented, We never thought we would tour again. Paul Rogers came along by chance and we seemed to have a chemistry. Paul is just such a great singer. He's not trying to be Freddie. The first leg was in Europe, the second in Japan and the third in the US in 2006. Queen received the inaugural VH1 Rock Honors at the Mandalay Bay Events Center in Las Vegas, Nevada on 25 May 2006. The Foo Fighters paid homage to the band in performing Tie Your Mother Down to open the ceremony before being joined on stage by May Taylor and Paul Rogers who played a selection of Queen hits. On 15 August 2006, Brian May confirmed through his website and fan club that Queen Paul Rogers would begin producing their first studio album beginning in October to be recorded at a secret location. Queen Paul Rogers performed at the Nelson Mandela 90th birthday tribute held in Hyde Park, London on 27 June 2008 to commemorate Mandela's 90th birthday and again promote awareness of the HIV-AIDS pandemic. The first Queen Paul Rogers album, titled The Cosmos Rocks, was released in Europe on 12 September 2008 and in the United States on 28 October 2008. Following the release of the album the band again went on a tour through Europe, opening on Kharkiv's Freedom Square in front of 350,000 Ukrainian fans. The Kharkiv concert was later released on DVD. The tour then moved to Russia and the band performed two sold-out shows at the Moscow Arena. Having completed the first leg of its extensive European tour, 
which saw the band play 15 sold-out dates across nine countries. The UK leg of the tour sold out within 90 minutes of going on sale and included three London dates, the first of which was the O2 on 13 October. The last leg of the tour took place in South America and included a sold-out concert at the Estadio Jose Amalfitani Buenos Aires. Queen and Paul Rogers officially split up without animosity on 12 May 2009. Rogers stated, My arrangement with Queen was similar to my arrangement with Jimmy Page in the firm in that it was never meant to be a permanent arrangement. Rogers did not rule out the possibility of working with Queen again. 2009-2011 Departure from Emmy 40th Anniversary on 20 May 2009 May and Taylor performed We Are The Champions. Live on the season finale of American Idol with winner Chris Allen and runner-up Adam Lambert providing a vocal duet in mid-2009. After the split of Queen Paul Rogers, the Queen online website announced a new Greatest Hits compilation named Absolute Greatest. The album was released on 16 November and peaked at number 3 in the official UK chart. The album contains 20 of Queen's biggest hits spanning their entire career, and was released in four different formats, single disc, double disc, double disc with feature book, and a vinyl record. Before its release Queen ran an online competition to guess the track listing as a promotion for the album. On 30 October 2009, May wrote a fan club letter on his website stating that Queen had no intentions to tour in 2010, but that there was a possibility of a performance. He was quoted as saying the greatest debate, though is always about when we will next play together as Queen. At the moment, in spite of the many rumors that are out there we do not have plans to tour in 2010. The good news though is that Roger and I have a much closer mutual understanding these days, privately and professionally. And all ideas are carefully considered. Music is never far away from us. As I write, there is an important one-off performance on offer in the USA and it remains to be decided whether we will take up this particular challenge. Every day doors seem to open, and every day we interact perhaps more than ever before with the world outside. It is a time of exciting transition in rock music and in the business. It's good that the pulse still beats. On 15 November 2009 May and Taylor performed. Bohemian Rhapsody live on the British TV show The X Factor alongside the finalists. On 7 May 2010 May and Taylor announced that they were quitting their record label Emmy. After almost 40 years, on 20 August 2010, Queen's manager Jim Beach put out a newsletter stating that the band had signed a new contract with Universal Music. During an interview for Hard Talk on the BBC on the 22nd of September, May confirmed that the band's new deal was with Island Records, a subsidiary of Universal Music Group. For the first time since the late 1980s, 
Queen's catalog will have the same distributor worldwide as their current North American label. Hollywood Records is currently distributed by Universal. On 14 March 2011, which marked the band's 40th anniversary, Queen's first five albums were re released in the UK and some other territories as remastered deluxe editions. The second five albums of Queen's back catalogue were released worldwide on 27 June. With the exception of the US and Canada, the final five were released in the UK on 5 September. In May 2011, Jane's Addiction vocalist Perry Farrell noted that Queen are currently scouting their once former and current live bassist Chris Cheney to join the band. Farrell stated, I have to keep Chris away from Queen who want him and they're not gonna get him unless we're not doing anything. Then they can have him. In the same month Paul Rogers stated he may tour with Queen again in the near future. At the 2011 Broadcast Music Incorporated Awards held in London on 4 October Queen received the BMI Icon Award in recognition for their airplay success in the US. At the 2011 MTV Europe Music Awards on 6 November, Queen received the Global Icon Award which Katy Perry presented to Brian May. Queen closed the award ceremony with Adam Lambert on vocals performing The Show Must Go On. We will rock you and we're the champions. The collaboration garnered a positive response from both fans and critics resulting in speculation about future projects together. 2011 present, Queen Adam Lambert Queen Forever on 25 and the 26th of April, May and Taylor appeared on the 11th series of American Idol at the Nokia Theatre Los Angeles performing a Queen medley, with the six finalists on the first show and the following day performed Somebody to Love with the Queen Extravaganza Band. Queen were scheduled to headline Sonisphere at Nebworth on 7 July 2012 with Adam Lambert before the festival was cancelled. Queen's final concert with Freddie Mercury was in Nebworth in 1986. Brian May commented, It's a worthy challenge for us and I'm sure Adam would meet with Freddie's approval. Queen expressed disappointment at the cancellation and released a statement to the effect that they were looking to find another venue. Queen Adam Lambert played two shows, at the Hammersmith Apollo London on 11 and 12 July 2012. Both shows sold out within 24 hours of tickets going on open sale. A third London date was scheduled for 14 July. On 30 June Queen Lambert performed in Kiev, Ukraine at a joint concert with Elton John for the Elena Pinchuk ANTIAIDS Foundation. Queen also performed with Lambert on 3 July 2012 at Moscow's Olympic Stadium and on 7 July 2012 at the Municipal Stadium in Wrocław, Poland. On 12 August 2012 Queen performed at the closing ceremony of the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. The performance at London's Olympic Stadium opened with a special remastered video clip of Mercury on stage performing his call-and-response routine during the 1986 concert at Wembley Stadium. Following this may perform part of the Brighton Rock solo before being joined by Taylor and solo artist Jesse J for a performance of We Will Rock You. On 20 September 2013 Queen Adam Lambert performed at the iHeartRadio Music Festival at the MGM Grand Hotel. Queen Adam Lambert toured North America in summer 2014 in Australia and New Zealand in August, September 2014. In an interview with Rolling Stone May and Taylor said that although the tour with Lambert is a limited thing they are open to him becoming an official member and cutting new material with him. In November 2014 Queen released a new album, Queen Forever. The album is largely a compilation of previously released material, 
but features three new Queen tracks featuring vocals from Mercury with backing added by the surviving members of Queen. One new track, There Must Be More to Life Than This, is a duet between Mercury and Michael Jackson. In 2016 the group embarked across Europe and Asia on the Queen Adam Lambert 2016 Summer Festival Tour. This included closing the Isle of Wight Festival in England on 12 June where they performed Who Wants to Live Forever as a tribute to the victims of the mass shooting at a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida earlier that day. On 12 September they performed at the Park Hayakon in Tel Aviv, Israel for the first time in front of 58,000 people. The group announced that it will tour again starting in the summer of 2017 as a part of the Queen. Adam Lambert Tour 2017-2018 Musical Style Queen drew artistic influence from British rock acts of the 1960s and early 1970s such as The Beatles, The King's Cream, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Who, Black Sabbath, Slade, Deep Purple, David Bowie, Genesis and Yes in addition to American guitarist Jimi Hendrix, with Mercury also inspired by the gospel singer Aretha Franklin, May referred to The Beatles as being our Bible in the way they used the studio and they painted pictures, and this wonderful instinctive use of harmonies, at their outset in the early 1970s, Queen's music has been characterized as Led Zeppelin meets Yes due to its combination of acoustic electric guitar extremes and fantasy-inspired multi-part song epics. Queen composed music that drew inspiration from many different genres of music often with a tongue-in-cheek attitude. The genres they have been associated with include progressive rock, symphonic rock, art rock, glam rock, hard rock, heavy metal, pop rock, and psychedelic rock. Queen also wrote songs that were inspired by diverse musical styles which are not typically associated with rock groups such as opera, music hall, folk music, gospel, ragtime and dance, disco. Several Queen songs were written, with audience participation in mind such as We Will Rock You and We're the Champions. Similarly Radio Gaga became a live favorite because it would have crowds clapping like they were at a Nuremberg rally. In 1963 the teenage Brian May and his father custom built his signature guitar red special which was purposely designed to feedback. Sonic experimentation figured heavily in Queen's songs. A distinctive characteristic of Queen's music are the vocal harmonies which are usually composed of the voices of May Mercury and Taylor best heard on the studio albums A Night at the Opera and A Day at the Races. Some of the groundwork for the development of this sound can be attributed to their former producer Roy Thomas Baker and their engineer Mike Stone. Besides vocal harmonies, Queen were also known for multi-tracking voices to imitate the sound of a large choir through overdubs. For instance, according to Brian May, there are over 180 vocal overdubs in Bohemian Rhapsody. The band's vocal structures have been compared with the Beach Boys, but May stated they were not much of an influence. Legacy. In 2002 Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody was voted the UK's favorite hit of all time. In a poll conducted by the Guinness World Records British Hit Singles Book. In 2004, the song was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Many scholars consider the Bohemian Rhapsody music video groundbreaking crediting it with popularizing the medium. Rock historian Paul Fowles states the song is widely credited as the first global hit single, for which an accompanying video was central to the marketing strategy. It has been hailed as launching the MTV age, acclaimed for their stadium rock. In 2005 an industry poll ranked Queen's performance at Live Aid in 1985 as the best live act in history. In 2007, 
They were also voted the greatest British band in history by BBC Radio 2 listeners. As of 2005, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, Queen albums have spent a total of 1,322 weeks on the UK album charts more time than any other musical act. Also in 2005 with the release of the live album with Paul Rogers, Queen moved into third place on the list of acts, with the most aggregate time spent on the British record charts. In 2006, the greatest hits album was the all-time best-selling album in UK chart history, with sales of 5,407,587 copies over 604,295 more copies than its nearest competitor, The Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Their Greatest Hits 2 album is the seventh bestseller with sales of 3,746,404 copies. The band have released a total of 18 number one albums, 18 number one singles, and 10 number one DVDs worldwide, making them one of the world's best selling music artists. Queen have sold over 150 million records, with some estimates in excess of 300 million records worldwide, including 34.5 million albums in the US as of 2004. Inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2001, the band is the only group in which every member has composed more than one chart-topping single and all four members were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2003. In 2009, We Will Rock You and We're the Champions were inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame, and the latter was voted the world's favorite song in a 2005 Sony Ericsson Global Music Poll. Queen are one of the most bootlegged bands ever according to Nick Weymouth who manages the band's official website. A 2001 survey discovered the existence of 12,225 websites dedicated to Queen bootlegs, the highest number for any band. Bootleg recordings have contributed to the band's popularity in certain countries where Western music is censored such as Iran. In a project called Queen, the Top 100 Bootlegs many of these have been made officially available to download for a nominal fee from Queen's website with profits going to the Mercury Phoenix Trust. Rolling Stone ranked Queen at number 52 on its list of the 100 greatest artists of all time, while ranking Mercury the 18th greatest singer and May the 26th greatest guitarist. Queen were named 13th on VH1's 100 Greatest Artists of Hard Rock list, and in 2010 were ranked 17th on VH1's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time list. In 2012, Gigwise readers named Queen the best band of the past 60 years. Musical Theatre in May 2002 a musical a rock theatrical based on the songs of Queen titled We Will Rock You opened at the Dominion Theatre on London's West End. The musical was written by British comedian and author Ben Elton in collaboration with Brian May and Roger Taylor and produced by Robert De Niro. It has since been staged in many cities around the world. Following the Las Vegas premiere on 8 September 2004, Queen were inducted into the Hollywood Rock Walk in Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles. The original London production was scheduled to close on Saturday 7 October 2006. At the Dominion, in theatre but due to public demand the show ran until May 2014. We Will Rock You has become the longest-running musical ever to run at this prime London theatre. Overtaking the previous record holder the musical Grease, Brian May stated in 2008 that they were considering writing a sequel to We Will Rock You. The musical toured around the UK in 2009 playing at Manchester Palace Theatre Sunderland Empire, Birmingham Hippodrome, Bristol Hippodrome and Edinburgh Playhouse.
The launch of the musical coincided with Queen Elizabeth II's Golden Jubilee. As part of the Jubilee celebrations Brian May performed a guitar solo of God Save the Queen, as featured on Queen's A Night at the Opera from the Roof of Buckingham Palace. The recording of this performance was used as video for the song on the 30th anniversary DVD edition of A Night at the Opera. Sean Bovim created Queen at the Ballet a tribute to Mercury which uses Queen's music as a soundtrack for the show's dancers who interpret the stories behind tracks such as Bohemian Rhapsody, Radio Gaga and Killer Queen. Queen's music also appears in the off-Broadway production Power Ballads most notably the song We Are The Champions where the show's two performers believing the song was the apex of artistic achievement in its day. Digital Realm in conjunction with Electronic Arts Queen released the computer game Queen, the I in 1998. The music itself, tracks from Queen's vast catalogue, in many cases remixed into new instrumental versions, was by and large well received. But the game experience was hampered by poor gameplay. Adding to the problem was an extremely long development time, resulting in graphic elements that already seemed outdated by the time of release. Under the supervision of May and Taylor, numerous restoration projects have been underway involving Queen's lengthy audio and video catalogue. DVD releases of their 1986 Wembley concert 1982 Milton Keynes concert and two greatest video hits have seen the band's music remixed into 5.1 and DTS surround sound. So far only two of the band's albums A Night at the Opera and The Game have been fully remixed into high-resolution multi-channel surround on DVD audio. A Night at the Opera was re-released with some revised 5.1 mixes and accompanying videos in 2005 for the 30th anniversary of the album's original release. In 2007, a Blu-ray edition of Queen's previously released concerts Queen Rock Montreal was released marking their first project in 1080 PhD. Queen have been featured multiple times in the Guitar Hero franchise, a cover of Killer Queen. In the original Guitar Hero we are the champions fat-bottomed girls and the Paul Rogers collaboration Celebrity in a track pack for Guitar Hero World Tour. Under pressure with David Bowie in Guitar Hero 5 I Want It All in Guitar Hero, Van Halen, Stone Cold Crazy in Guitar Hero, Metallica and Bohemian Rhapsody, in Guitar Hero, Warriors of Rock. On 13 October 2009 Brian May revealed there was talk going on behind the scenes about a dedicated Queen rock band game. Queen have also been featured multiple times in the rock band franchise, a track pack of 10 songs, which are compatible with Rock Band Rock Band 2 and Rock Band 3. The hit Bohemian Rhapsody was featured in Rock Band 3 with full harmony and keys support. The band also appeared in the video game LEGO Rock Band as playable LEGO avatars. In March 2009, Sony Computer Entertainment released a Queen-branded version of the company's karaoke franchise, SingStar. The game which is available on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 is titled SingStar Queen and has 25 songs on the PS3 and 20 on the PS2. We Will Rock You and Other Songs by Queen also appear in DJ Hero. One Vision was featured on the successful video game Grand Theft Auto 4 on the fictional radio station Liberty Rock Radio 97.8 while Radio Gaga features on Grand Theft Auto 5 character trailer for Michael and the Game's soundtrack. Film and Television Queen contributed music directly to the films Flash Gordon with Flash as the theme song, and Highlander with A Kind of Magic One Year of Love Who Wants to Live Forever Hammer to Fall, and the theme Princes of the Universe. 
which was also used as the theme of the Highlander TV series. In the United States, Bohemian Rhapsody was re-released as a single in 1992 after appearing in the comedy film Wayne's World. The single subsequently reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and helped rekindle the band's popularity in North America. Several films have featured their songs performed by other artists. A version of Somebody to Love by Anne Hathaway was in the 2004 film Ella Enchanted. In 2006, Brittany Murphy also recorded a cover of the same song for the 2006 film Happy Feet. In 2001, a version of the show Must Go On was performed by Jim Broadbent and Nicole Kidman in the film musical Moulin Rouge. The 2001 film A Knight's Tale has a version of We Are The Champions performed by Robbie Williams and Queen. The film also features we Will Rock You played by the medieval audience. I Was Born to Love You was used as the theme song of the Japanese television drama Pride on Fuji Television in 2004. Starring Takuya Kimura and Yuko Takuchi, the show's soundtrack also contained other songs by Queen. Don't Stop Me Now has featured in the BBC television show Top Gear. And in 2005 the song was voted as the greatest driving song ever by the show's viewers. Keeping in a tradition of naming each season's episodes after songs by 1970s rock bands the eighth and final season of that 70s show had episodes named after Queen songs. Bohemian Rhapsody served as the season premiere. The Simpsons has made storylines which have featured Queen in songs such as We Will Rock You, We Are The Champions and You're My Best Friend. On the 11th of April 2006, Brian May and Roger Taylor appeared on the American singing contest television show American Idol. Each contestant was required to sing a Queen song during that week of the competition. Songs which appeared on the show included Bohemian Rhapsody Fat Bottomed Girls, the show must go on Who Wants to Live Forever and Innuendo. Brian May later criticized the show for editing specific scenes, one of which made the group's time with contestant Ace Young look negative despite it being the opposite. Taylor and May again appeared on the American Idol season 8 finale in May 2009 performing We Are the Champions with finalists Adam Lambert and Chris Allen. On 15 November 2009, Brian May and Roger Taylor appeared on the singing contest television show X Factor in the UK. In the autumn of 2009, Glee featured the fictional high school show Choir Singing Somebody to Love as their second act performance in the episode The Road's Not Taken. The performance was included on the show's Volume 1 soundtrack CD. In June 2010 the choir performed Another One Bites the Dust in the episode Funk. The following week's episode Journey to Regionals features a rival choir performing Bohemian Rhapsody in its entirety. The song was featured on the episode's EP. In May 2012 the choir performed We Are The Champions in the episode Nationals and the song features in the graduation album. In September 2010, Brian May announced in a BBC interview that Sasha Baron Cohen was to play Mercury in a film of the same name. Time commented with approval on his singing ability and visual similarity to Mercury. However, in July 2013 Baron Cohen dropped out of the role due to creative differences between him and the surviving band members. In December 2013, it was announced that Ben Winshaw, best known for playing Q in the James Bond film Skyfall, had been chosen to replace Cohen in the role of Mercury. The motion picture is being written by Peter Morgan, who had been nominated for Oscars for his screenplays The Queen and Frost, Nixon. The film, which is being co-produced by Robert De Niro's Tribeca Productions, will focus on Queen's formative years and the period leading up to the celebrated performance at the 1985 Live Aid concert.
Brought to you by Wikivd.com. Would you like to know more?